Okay, so today we are gonna be working in the berry area. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to here today. It is April 11th, 2020. So here I am, I'm sitting in our berry area. If Lori wants to scan around just a little bit, kind of give you a reference as far as to where we're at. So as she's scanning through, you'll see we have our mulberries that we had planted a couple weeks back now. Got them mulched in really well and they look really good. In fact, they have ripe mulberries on there that I could not keep myself from leaving on the plant. <laughs> so we've been having those for basically dessert the last couple nights and we'll continue to do that. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is we're talking about prepping beds in order to plant berries. Lori and I have spent the last couple weeks getting as many trees into the ground as we could before we ran out of time here in the spring in Arizona. So of course, now that we're hitting April, getting towards the middle of April, we've had unseasonably cool weather. Typically, a day like today would be up in the mid 90s and today I think we're going to hit 70 so it's just going to be a beautiful day but that's unusual and one thing we know for sure the hot weather is absolutely coming so we had to get the trees in as quickly as possible and essentially we've gotten to the point now where we're just not comfortable planting any additional trees or bushes or vines until we hit fall however there's still plenty of work to do so what we figured we would do is take this opportunity to see if we can get a few beds prepped for berries and in this case it's specifically blackberries and that's what you see behind me here so what we've done is we've actually repurposed our bricks so these are the 8 by 8 by 16 bricks that we're actually utilizing for our compost bins on the old property and we it turns out we had exactly the right amount to make these beds so what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna start prepping and building soil in these beds so they're ready for fall so essentially what we're starting with is well hard compacted hard dirt <laughs> you'll see there's a lot of weeds in here which I'm not worried about we'll get to that uh, but it's, it's very very hard compacted very typical what you would consider desert looking soil I mean literally if you see kind of those pictures of uh, nasty deserts this is what you're used to seeing just cracks on the top and not much growing now of course we do have a lot of weeds that have come in because we've had some fantastic water this spring however there's not much here so trying to put berries directly into this soil would be a real challenge and what we're looking at in these two beds are actually going to be more specifically blackberries so I'm gonna go ahead and link a video here where we talked about the setup we had on the old property as far as berries were concerned one of the things that we noticed we assumed that we would need to give shade to those berries however our triple crown blackberry and our primark blackberry both did really really well with full Sun so what we're doing now is we're basically building on that and doing a couple of small changes changes the first one is the size of the bed particularly for the triple crown blackberry that is very aggressive as far as sending runners out it very quickly overtook those small beds and extended beyond the beds now we don't mind that happening but we really would try to, would like to try to keep them as contained as we can it helps with harvesting more than anything so what we have here is we have about a six by nine bed so we got just over 50 square feet to work with and our plan is to put one maybe two individual plants in each bed however we need to have some type of soil to plant them into this fall so typically what we would use in order to amend soil like this for berries would be our go-to garden amendment that would be those big Kellogg's red and white bags it's basically basically a a an organic garden soil that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's mix it in with this dirt and go from there however we figured you know what we've got some time let's go ahead and see if we can build some some of this soil on our own so here's our plan first thing we're going to do is we're going to break up this soil now i do plan on getting a different tiller so all you permaculture permies out there get, don't give me a hard time with our hard desert soil breaking it up in the very beginning is really critical it helps with soil structure when i'm building this soil so this little electric guy is going to work for these small beds and i'm hoping that we can get at least a few inches of this dirt scraped up and kind of roughed up a little bit in order to actually start the process of creating soil above of that area it'll still give us a good base for everything to grow into but of course we're gonna be building soil up above that so first thing we're gonna do is we need to break up the ground second thing 
is I want to make sure we start out with some soil life in here. So as we were trying to decide what we could put in here to kind of kickstart that soil microbiology, particularly the bacterial biology, we figured we could go with something that is not quite finished yet. And that would be some simple, simple, unfinished compost that we started when we first got onto this property a few months back. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to collect a little bit of that. So let's run over to the chicken coop and see what we've got going on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the sound. We've got a storm blowing in this afternoon that we're trying to get in front of. But this is our unfinished compost. You can see we removed the kumquats off of our kumquat trees that we just put in the ground right over here next to the coop. And what we've done is we've been building this compost pile for a couple months. Now we're not paying a lot of attention to it, but what I can tell you is in here, we've got wood chips in here from our wood chip pile. Obviously you see the kumquats. We did harvest a lot of citrus off the old property before we sold it. And so you'll there's citrus peels in here. And I believe we have a a little bit of chicken manure in here and that's really about it we haven't spent a lot of time with it turning it and trying to take care of it you can see these the whole kumquats uh, that are still here in it however what I'm gonna do I want to turn this over for you real quick have Lori slide in and take a look at what's inside the middle of this so hopefully you can pick it up on camera but that would be exactly what we're looking for you can see the worms in here. So they are really, really happy. So I know in the center of this pile, I've got some worm activity, which is what I want. And I know that I've got bacteria and fungal that just is just going to town on all the wood chips and other things that we have in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bucket of the center part of this compost and we're gonna inoculate those beds and start them off right with worms right away. So I've got my bucket of compost here, so I'm ready to get started on this first bed. So now what I'm gonna do is get beat up pretty good with this tiller that's behind me now. Go ahead and get into that bed, actually in both of them, see if I can break up this ground a little bit so we actually have something to work with. That's done. I'll tell you what, I really like that little sun, Joe. I'll tell you what, it's small, but man, it works really, really well. I use that on about three to 4,000 square feet of our 5,000 square foot pasture at the old property. So a little bit bigger job than that's probably designed for, but for little beds like this, you can see with our really, really hard dirt, that works great. And I think we've got that on our Amazon shop, assuming it's still available. Either way, it works really good. Now, what I didn't do, or what you didn't see on camera, I did go maybe two inches down as far as scraping the top layer of topsoil, breaking it up a bit with that tiller. And I did go a little heavier right here in the middle. So we've got a good, I'm gonna say, probably a good four to six inches of nice soft dirt right here in the middle, which is where I'm gonna start out that compost. So it's got plenty of space. And then the plan, I believe in this bed, as far as the berry, I think we're gonna put our triple crown in here. So that's actually where it will get planted because it sends out runners so well. Either way, we're done here. So what we need to do is we need to get, of course, some wood chips. So what we're gonna do is layer a couple things in here. 
Obviously we'll have the compost down here first. We'll make sure we're wetting this down as we go. And then as we build, we'll have a thin layer of straw. So we do like to use straw down here on the very bottom. I'm gonna keep all the weeds here that, or that kind of uh, biological activity. It's got things to kind of chew on when it comes to the organic matter. So we do have some weeds down here. We're gonna have a good six to eight inches of wood chips. So I'm not worried about those as far as those sprouting. Not a concern because of the amount of wood chips that will be in here but we need to head over to the wood chip pile and on the way back I need to grab some more compost so we can get these two beds done. We have this kind of set up. Now we did that, that kind of uh, lasagna method on purpose. So you can see we have the straw down first, watered that straw down really, really well. You can see we've actually got water pooling in here, which is exactly what I wanted. This will seep down into this ground. It'll take a few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes and it'll seep right in. The whole idea is that we get it nice and wet at each layer. One of the things that I've noticed with wood chips, especially when they're dry, they have a great job of pulling moisture in, but they can also push moisture away. So we wanna make sure as we're stacking this in that we add water at each layer. And so one thing I know for sure, that little bucket of compost that we put in there was completely full of worms. And of course, I know that they've got a happy home right in the middle of that wood chip pile. So no matter what we wind up doing on the outside here, I know that those worms in the middle are nice and happy. And they're gonna do a fantastic job of breaking all this down. So now what Lori and I need to do is uh, put a little more sweat equity into it, get the rest of this bed filled, and then do the exact same thing that we did here over in that bed. So we're gonna go ahead and get to work, hopefully, before we see any rain today. One other thing, so he started filling the second bed and needed to go back and get some more wood chips and realized there was actually one other ingredient that I wanted to add to these berry beds in order to help kind of kickstart some of this uh, fertilization. So what I have in front of me here are grade A quality cow patties. <laughs> they're completely dry. I'm sure that in the middle, they're probably still a little wet because we've had pretty consistent rain out here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just chunk these into pieces, spread them in throughout this bed and do the exact same thing with the first bed. So we've got another layer essentially in the lasagna Sounds pretty gross, uh, cow patty lasagna, but either way, we're gonna go ahead and get these spread in here. These will soften up really, really well, and I know for a fact those worms are gonna enjoy munching on this.
like that, we are done. So you can see we've got both of these beds ready to go. Now, obviously, we've still got a lot of work to do with these, but for the most part, we want to see if we can keep these nice and moist, so we'll water them at least a couple times a week. Hopefully, we get some monsoons. I mean, there's a chance of rain today. We'll see about that. <laughs> but obviously, hopefully, we'll have a good monsoon season through the summer. That'll help us out. Get some nice downpours and drenching in here. We'll make sure that we keep it nice and wet because it needs that. One of the things we learned on the old property is when we leave wood chips by themselves, it takes a good two to three years before it starts to break down and turn into soil. Now, the area in the middle where we have the compost and that kind of thing, I already know that's going to break down much more quickly, which is good because, again, like we had said, we plan on planting the trees in the middle. However, we want to make sure that those trees and those roots have plenty of space to grow out. I also know that we've got a lot of worms in there too, and we've given them a lot that they're going to be able to consume as they move from that middle out to the ends. So again, obviously, this is just the very beginning. We're giving this a try to see if we can create some soil and create an area that our berries can really thrive. Hopefully, the blackberries will love this as much as those worms are going to. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Ooh. Oh man, I think I think I got an ant in my pants. That's like not a joke. Uh, oh. <laughs>